All right, we're gonna get on some of this backlog information that I've been trying to get out there uh, before we really started our channel. And today I wanna to talk about the roofing. Uh, why I picked polycarbonate for the roofing, uh, what are other options for the roof, and in the end why I think it was best for our scenario here. Um, basically, uh, you have a couple choices with the roof. You can go with glass, you can go with a polycarbonate or a PVC, or like a plastic type film. Um, for me, uh, the plastic film just wasn't durable enough. Uh, you can kind of see some of the trees in the background. Uh, they're going to drop some leaves, they're going to drop some sticks, uh, things like that that are just going to drop on the roof. And I need to have something a little bit thicker than uh, a film. So that was eliminated for me. Um, it is uh, the, the cheapest, probably easiest to work with. Uh, but when it comes to a full-scale greenhouse like we were doing, we definitely wanted something a little bit more durable. Uh, so that's why we went to forego the, the, the film. Uh, the reason why we didn't go with glass is because, yes, as my garage has a ton of windows left over from putting up this greenhouse, uh, those windows are not made for a roof. I don't know what it would take to get those windows to be made for a roof, so uh, that wasn't going to happen and buying uh, glass for a roof uh, I have no idea what it would cost but it would sure I would bank, break the bank on that one so what I ended up doing was going with uh, either polycarbonate or PVC uh, during my research I found out that the PVC uh, if I remember correctly degrades a little bit faster than the polycarbonate and doesn't have as good of a thermal conductivity uh, for the greenhouse as we would like us here being in the northeast, we have the potential for uh, wide swings on temperature, also the chance of a blizzard. So I wanted to also make sure that there was enough strength on that roof as well to make sure that it wasn't going to cave in uh, during the winter. So now that I picked polycarbonate, there's a couple different types of polycarbonate that you can choose. Uh, there's the typical, what you would see, um, more of a ridged uh, surface to it. Uh, you have uh, similar to what I picked up here. That's a, a multi-wall, or in this case, it's a dual wall. And then there's triple. There's I believe quadruple, and they come in different other shapes and sizes, custom things like that. Um, me personally, I went with as I said the dual wall, the double wall. Um, that one worked out well, uh, and it does cost a little bit more than a single one with the ridges that you typically see. Uh, but not that much more uh, when you consider everything so that's why I went with the double wall along with the thermal conductivity to, to keep the heat in and also I believe it's a little bit stronger so that's why we went with the double wall so here's the polycarbonate a piece of it is dual walled which means there's a wall on the bottom wall on the top and if you had a triple wall or quadruple wall there would just be a third wall and a fourth wall uh, going across. Uh, the one I pr particularly have is six millimeters uh, squares here just lined up one after another. They're hollow tubes to help with thermal conductivity and they go all the way down the full eight, length, eight foot length of this polycarbonate. So those polycarbonate sheets were pretty big. They were four foot wide, eight foot long. Uh, you can kind of see uh, where they mesh up on, on the roof. Uh, there's just a couple more screws in those areas. The eight foot long by four foot wide sheets of polycarbonate were cumbersome. Uh, getting up there, moving it around, um, going through that that process uh, was hard. I had to uh, go across and reach a good four feet across to put in a couple of those screws. Uh, it was not the most fun job I've ever done. Uh, but it got done. Uh, so when you're buying the corrugated, the, the ridged one, uh, polycarbonate, those typically come in two foot wide pieces. So keep that in mind. Uh, the, that would have been a lot easier, I promise you. And the ridges uh, on that, they actually uh, help you with marrying the first piece to the next piece and so on and so forth. Uh, this one in particular that, that we used, for uh, our polycarbonate, uh, you had to use uh, H channels uh, in between the, the the links of it. 
on the tops and bottoms we're supposed to use uh, this which is called a C channel so think of the H channel as just two of these uh, one like this and one on the other side so just marry the two of them up together and the two of them would be your H channel and that was how you would butt up together the two pieces of polycarbonate but on the very top near the ridge of the roof and the bottom of the roof uh, those would be where you would put the C channel just to cap it off because you don't want to have those open holes uh, for anything to go in and out of I assume bugs and who knows what else would get in there uh, and most worst case water dual wall polycarbonate was a little bit more expensive than the single walled ridged polycarbonate uh, for our roof uh, it probably cost a total of about a thousand dollars maybe a little bit more for the dual walled my best guess estimate for the ridge one was about $800 but we wanted the extra thermal conductivity or, or lack of or insulation so so uh, because we got the thermal insulation in there I was willing to put up a little bit extra more money on that and personally I think this looks a little bit better uh, even though it was a bigger pain to put in a little more expensive uh, I like the nice flat roof uh, I think it looks sharp but uh, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with the rigid uh, roof. Uh, it's just a personal preference. This particular roof comes with a roof ridge. This piece was, a t was originally four feet long this way. I cut it off as in this is one of my scraps left. Uh, so this would go on your roof ridge at the very peak of the roof and you just slap this down. That's how you end up keeping your roof from getting water in it so it's pretty simple uh, that piece in particular you had to screw every uh, 12 inches or one foot uh, just to make sure it was down and in place the polycarbonate sheets the four foot wide sheets by eight foot long uh, those you had to screw in about every two feet so uh, a little bit of leeway there uh, the other thing you want to watch out for on this polycarbonate is basically since you're screwing everything at two feet, it needs uh, purling uh, in between to make sure that the roof uh, uh, doesn't collapse from snow or wind or something pushing on it. Uh, it just makes sure that any weight that gets pushed on that surface doesn't push it all the way down and collapse on you. Because last thing you want to see in the middle of summer, I'm sorry, in the middle of spring, is the uh, water just push it all the way down or worst case during the winter up here in the northeast you'll see that the snow has collapsed your roof in and now you have a big pile of snow in your greenhouse which of course nobody wants so I just realized that Rochelle's in the back there painting touch up paint she does the all the painting all the caulking so uh, if you have any questions about polycarbonate why I went this way hopefully that clears it up I hope it helps you if you're making a greenhouse or shed or whatever type of building you're trying to make. I hope it helps you get a little idea of why I did what I did and maybe that helps you go possibly a different way, maybe the same way. But uh, I figured to fill people in on what's going on and how we did it. And it was interesting getting on the top of the roof with a four foot by eight foot long panel, but uh, we made it happen as you always do. So the roof is almost up. We're gonna have the bottom end and the top end, uh, which is already done, the top end near the peak. That's uh, already got what's a, a tape on it. Uh, the tape is just a barrier, stops dust, debris, and the top end has a moisture stopping to get in there. And the bottom's gonna have a tape that's basically just a, a breathable tape just to make sure no debris gets in while at the same time lets moisture and air in and out to get a little bit of flow. Uh, on the top and the bottom of, around that tape is that C channel. So this C channel is just going to go up and around the tape. So what you're going to end up seeing is hopefully a time lapse of me just doing this bottom end because I have yet to do that. So you'll see me putting up some tape along across it. You'll see me putting up the C channel. Uh, word of warning my hand still hurt a little bit from putting up the C channel on the top it was a, a little bit tedious uh, especially trying to get it around uh, the H channel the other parts in between the, the big panels uh, so another thing to think about if you're going this way 
So watch me get through this and hopefully it'll be done quick and easy. Now that I got a little bit of experience, I think I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully we'll have a time lapse and if uh, I fall from the ladder over there, uh, you'll get a laugh and it'll be good entertainment either way. So be right back. Alright, so that was the tape going up. The tape, it's like this, it's gray. Uh, the anti-dust tape that goes on the bottom has these white little oval slots, whatever you wish to call them. They're, they're, it's actual tape there. It's not a, you know, a hole or anything. But um, yeah, you just bring it all the way across and, and uh, wrap it around the edge. And that's it. And we'll get up the, uh, we'll get up the C channel next. We're putting up the uh, C channel. It just looks like a letter C when you put it up there. So um, I guess like that would be more of a letter C. But uh, yeah, you just uh, put the wider side of the C on the inside and the top side on the top side or the outside of the greenhouse. So um, here we go. Mm -hmm. There's the C channel and uh, a little bit extra this time. So uh, we'll have to do the other side and we'll go from there. Well, what you haven't seen is the snippers. These are just some tin snips just used to uh, cut the ends of the C channel and the H channel. Uh, they're, they're nice, quick, easy. It's not the straightest cut, but uh, I haven't found anything else that really worked to cut this except for uh, a circular saw. It gives it gives it a nice good cut when uh, you use a fine tooth uh, blade and that's the roof so uh, any questions on the roof let me know gonna get some bonus video this is Rochelle working in the back the entire time she's scraping so all that extra paint on the windows 
There she is, scraping away. Making it look pretty. You know, making it look pretty. So there's, there it goes. I'll get on the other side so you can actually see what's going on there. So, so. There she is, scraping away. So this is an older, older window, so it's not gonna look as pretty as some of the, the nicer windows that we got. But I'm just taking the razor and running it along where the paint and maybe like the caulk might have gathered. And then taking it and then making a big ribbon. And kind of pulling the excess off. You know, on the camera, you can't really tell the difference between what's on the outside and the inside. Mm -hmm. But uh, Maybe, let's see here if I we can show you a window that's already done. I think over... Here's a really good example because this paint is done on there both sides and this that's, one is only done on the outside. There we go. Yeah. Alright, let's show them the one on the inside. Let's get that one done so they can see it. First hand. Yeah, so... This one, just kind of run the razor right along and it's kind of a thick buildup of paint right here. So I'm just running it a couple times and then run it up to the sides. Just right along the edge of the window pane and the, and the frame. And then we just take it. Beautiful. And peel off the paint or the cloth or whatever it is that is along the side. There, there you go. Is. Some come off a little bit more easily and others are a little bit more stubborn, but so you'll see the finished product kinda. Mm -hmm. There. So as you can tell, there's just a little bit more work to do <laughs> than scraping. But the good news is the inside can get done just about any time in the winter because it's a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So it'll be toasty warm, which we will check out the temperature. Doors open, but it's about 62 degrees. Not bad at all. Mm. There's already plants in here. Yes. Sam and I had a uh, guess as to when Rochelle would have plants in here. He said the day after it was done, we get back home, they're already in here. So They found their winter home. Some rosemary and mint and catnip and some sage. Yeah, we'll be seeing a lot more of those <laughs> in future videos, that's for sure. Yes. All right. She goes. So, All nice and cleaned up. Yeah, a couple of stubborn points you just gotta go back and forth on a little bit, but for the most part that's what you're going for. And then eventually it'll look like this one. All nice clean with the straight edges on it. Unlike this one, which hasn't been touched yet. So that's what you'll do after you paint the windows. You'll have to scrape away, but it seems to be the fastest, easiest way yeah. you can, to do it. You can tape them with the masking tape, but I don't know which would be a faster cleanup and prep, whether you use the masking tape or the razor afterwards. But We assume this way would be a little bit faster, mm -hmm. and we'd have to worry less about exactness of masking tape. Exactly. That's it. All right.